For real. <laughs> <laughs> accurate. Yeah. You're right. That's Not gonna accurate. lie. I just shot myself on accident, itching my head with a revolver. <laughs> Did you die? Let's not talk about you it. Legitimate, you legit. <laughs> you legitimate let's shot yourself in the head. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> I might. I might log off. I don't know. It's. <laughs> I don't. Man, I really just did that. Hardcore, the term used for so many games over these past twenty or so years of my gaming life. Whether it's me, a friend, or an over-exaggerated YouTuber, the word has always been used to stress just how intense a game can really get, and it's really funny actually looking back on all of those times now because every time I ever said that was on a flat screen playing an Xbox or Nintendo or whatever. And I know, I know those are really still fun, but I just feel a little silly I guess thinking that intensity would always stay on that screen now that I've given up basically all forms of flat gaming and stay in VR 99.999% of the time. Now with all of that being said there is one game outside of VR that's on PC that was almost way too intense or hardcore for me to get used to and that was Escape from Tarkov. For those not familiar with this game type, a long story short, it's a loot shoot extract, gear hoarding, confusing, and extremely unforgiving game that will leave you hating everything about gaming, smashing your keyboard one night, then waking up the next day with good raids, eating ice cream with sprinkles all over. From understanding how all the weapons work, looting, loading weapons, matching ammo types and magazines, it's just really, really overwhelming for most people and you have to really get into understanding what's going on. And just as that game was leaving my mind, like a forgotten fart, guess what happens? Yup, someone went and done it. Put a literal mirror version of Escape from Tarkov in virtual reality. And as you probably already know, it's called Ghost of Tabor, which is pretty sick also in my opinion. But aside from that, I almost don't know where to even start with this script from here now because we've spoken about the name and it's just leaving me absolutely speechless beyond that. And keep in mind, when I asked about how long this has been in development with code involved, they said 10 months and my jaw hit the freaking floor. Ja cię zabił, pan. Ja cię zabił, pan tamten. Oh, damn, dude. Oh, I broke his neck, though. Oh, man. Guns are hard to shoot in that game. Oh, wow. Ghost of Tabor seems to be really, really obsessed with having absolute accuracy in literally everything they do, and it shows when it comes to the weapons, which are from what I can tell, actual one-to-ones of real-life weapons, because if the stock can fold in real life, it can fold here. If it can collapse in real life, it does it here. If you're attaching night vision, you use your hands to flip it up and down, and of course, if you're loading bullets into a magazine, not only do you have to pull out the box of ammo, but you have to slide the tray of ammo out and pull every bullet out one by one, which is just annoyingly addicting, and I'm so grateful for it because it means even more when you drill something with a bullet that you know touched your hands. But outside of these things, there are just so many more things that make this the most detailed, thought-out game I've probably ever experienced in virtual reality so far, and that is saying a lot coming from me and this channel because the gun handling in Vale is so damn good, but that doesn't mean this lacks in that area. I just noticed things like different hand positioning and detailed finger movements in Veil vale that aren't here just yet. But the gunplay itself is just insanely good already, and I have to admit, much, much more difficult than any other VR game I have experienced so far. For example, single fire is not the issue, but recoil in this game is just how you might expect in real life, which is just a little nutty. So don't expect to be spraying golf ball sized patterns from 20 yards at full auto with a weapon like it's nothing, because it's just not realistic. But again, this is all because this game basically leans on the hyper realism in every way possible that I've experienced so far. <laughs> we just ran into each other, bro. So apparently, I just found out 
you don't even start with a gun at all. So I'm going to go find a spoon, and we'll go from there. Now, what makes Ghost of Tabor different from Escape from Tarkov? Literally VR. That's that's it. But the rest is literally almost identical in every single freaking way imaginable, except for things like buying weapons or storing them are done in person by placing weapons on racks and scanning items to buy them in the first place at markets and checking out at stores with your own two hands in real life, which is just a huge leap in an absolute dream for me. This is honestly, this is the way to go. Like. Yeah, this is sick as Like I said, I'm really so cool. glad I haven't made the video yet. Because, like, whatever way there was to buy, forget that. This is... This is the way. This, this is, is the way. way. Mm-hmm. Dude, this is sick! I okay. love it. And all you have to do is add that third dimension and BAM! It's brand new. Every single time. And I think it's a huge misunderstanding, or overall, a huge underestimation by the general gaming community. I mean, we have things like Rainbow Six and Breachers VR and now Escape from Tarkov VR look alike all in the first month of the new year, and it's shocking to know how many flat screen patty cake gamers are out there right now completely oblivious or talking trash on VR without even a single clue of how much better this really is. And that is not my opinion. VR is just better. Fight me. I wouldn't be sure the exact number of people that have a hoarding problem in the world, or at least a percentage. I'm sure the info's out there somewhere, but if you're one of them or you don't want to become one of them, then maybe this game just isn't for you. Because the one thing I can't stress enough about this game is it really gets that circle of play going too good. I'd be playing for like three or four hours before I realized I've played one. The last game that had me doing this was Scum, which is another game type I would love to see in VR, more of a hyper-realistic survival with its own things going on, but this year is already getting too insane for me to handle, and if you already didn't know, I'm not the best at keeping up with what games are coming in and out or when they are or anything like that, so these are all just little happy surprises for me to get to freak out like a little kid about, because I am a hoarder at least in game, and maybe with some electronics in real life. And this game has so much going on to scratch that itch, it's really hard to take in. So with that being said, there are discords below, as well as the one for this channel, because I love seeing all you wacky people in there from time to time. So until next time, be waiting for this to drop sometime this year. Stay blessed, stay focused, stay happy, and we will see you later. Goodbye. Yeah, I don't care who you are. The fact that I can pull my visor up and down. <laughs> oh man, this is uh, this is like a gamer's dream come true.